Good morning. My name is Chris Cobb. I'm the executive pastor here, and it's an honor to be with you today. Let's pray as we get started. Lord, your goodness and mercy is waiting here for us. Thank you. On this hot summer day, we realize that you have the exact cool, refreshing drink for our souls that we need, and we can't find it anywhere else. No matter where we've come from, no matter what our past is, you're waiting here to love us, and we're grateful for that. We pray that these words in Psalm 23 would refresh us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we picked this sermon series, Refresh, and my wife reminded me this morning, Chris, it's really refreshing if the sermon is short. So, (laughs) preacher's families are are tough, just so you know. Uh, Well, I, I know something is a fact, that God is up to something in your life before you came here, before you even got in the car today. That this week, God has been doing something and preparing something and working in your life behind the scenes. Whether you're a follower of Jesus or you're kind of testing the waters with Christianity or you're just pushed God away, the reality is God still cares deeply for each one of us. We were made in God's image and God works in our lives. Um, I'm grateful today just to be a tiny part of that as we look at Psalm 23. I know this, and you know it as well, that life's a journey. A lot of twists, a lot of turns, and sometimes we just need to kind of pause and and refresh our lives to refocus on on what is important. I, I heard some sage advice recently that went like this, where you are is not where you're going. And that's good news for some of us. Where we are now and find ourselves is not where we're going. To take a look at some of these pictures, and you might identify with your life in some of these pictures. Maybe you are overburdened, <laughs> and you just can't get any traction. The things you have going on in your life, wow, just get you up, and, and, and there's no way forward, you feel like. Or, or maybe there are so many people that are counting on you. You feel like your life is overwhelmed and they're just loaded down with all of the responsibilities and relationships you have and you feel like you have to take care of. It's just tough. Or maybe there's some relationship problems going on in your life and you're thinking, you know, what comes out of my mouth to this person I love so much is not what my heart wants. And, but we just can't seem to get on the same page. Or maybe this may feel more like you. You just are acting not like you want to act and reacting in a way that just is maybe angry or uncontrollable. There's just a frustration and you just just want to scream. Don't worry, I'm not going to scream. Where you are is not where you're going. Where you are is not where God wants you to be. But the good news is God's right there with you. Have you ever heard or thought, maybe it's kind of a myth that happens sometimes, that we ask Jesus to be our Savior, we're Christians, God's with us, but now my life should be trouble-free. Well, have you found that to be a reality in your life? There's maybe a tiny slice of truth in that, but if we buy into this line of thinking that my life should be trouble-free if I'm a Christian, we begin to wonder why when things go wrong. Why is this happening to me? Why did God allow this in my life? How can a loving God stand there and watch me go through this? Well, there's a concept that I've learned recently. It's simply this. We live in an already but not yet world. As a follower of Jesus, I already know that God is with me. I already know that that my sins have been forgiven and that, that I have a home in heaven But I live in this not yet world where there's evil and sickness and where wars exist and where other people make choices and I have to deal with their consequences. I live in a a not yet place that's uncomfortable and can be painful. Well, we're starting a a little two-week mini-series about talking about finding our true sense of refreshment in that not yet part of our lives. Uh, this midsummer refresher, and I encourage you, if you 
are here this week or next week or choose not to be here, one of the two, uh, don't be here this week because next week we're going to have a little sweet treat for you and the kids afterwards and you're going to think, oh, that really is kind of cool, so just be here next week. Do you need to refresh your faith this summer? Has life come at you in an unexpected way and the pace of life and you just find yourself working very hard to make it? You may identify with this picture, parched. You're, you're dry. Maybe it's a health issue or a financial burden. It's just on your back. It, it could be some doubt has crept into your life. You've not turned away from God or following God, but you just kind of doubt that God's there and sees you. You can't shake it. You're parched and you're tired. Uh, if I were to ask you what your greatest need is, the place of your deepest pain right now, where you're thirsty for God, what would that be? I have found in my life that where my greatest need is, is where I will find God's refreshing presence most clearly. Where my greatest need is, is exactly where I will find God's refreshing presence most clearly if and when I open up my life to God. That not yet place where I'm dry, where I'm parched and realize I can't move forward on my own, I need help, that's exactly where God is waiting for me with open arms. Today I'm going to be looking at the first half of Psalm 23. It's my favorite, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, and I've never in 20 plus years preached on this, but this is where we find the true source and of lasting refreshment. It's in the person of God, the provision of God, and the presence of God. This psalm was written by David. It could have been a song. It could have been just notes in a journal. It could have been a poetry. It's describing his life and giving us metaphors that each of us can link onto and under understand. I'm excited about this morning because you know when you hear a podcast or, or a, somebody has taught or, or, or maybe it's a TED talk and you think, those are one or two things that I can apply to my life. It could be leadership or parenting, financial advice, whatever it might be. The, Psalm 23 is full of those little tidbits that if we apply them to our life, we can, our, our lives will improve right here, right now. Psalm 23 introduces us to the person of God as described by David, right out of the bat, the Lord is my shepherd. David identifies God by using one of the most relational images in the Psalms. If you read through the Psalms, you'll hear God is king, God is deliverer, God is rock, God is shield. All of those are wonderful parts of our images that we get to understand who God is, but David picks the most intimate of terms. Nothing in the biblical times was more constant, intimate than a shepherd who lives with, sleeps with, travels with, knows each sheep by name. A shepherd is a, is a constant guide, a constant physician, a constant protector to his sheep. In Isaiah 40, this, these words were written about God in this way, he will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. See, David knew a secret that having a shepherd watching over him is a very good thing. Jesus takes up this image in John 10, 11, when he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. It may be that you need to hear that today, that God is not just David's shepherd in the pages of the Bible, but God wants to be your shepherd today. God has a desire to have a personal relationship with you because God is a relational being. God is an expert at his craft, at relating to us, at revealing himself to us. But the question is, will we respond with open arms and allow God to be our shepherd? Sometimes the difficulties of our lives can make us, make us run, just, just take off. We don't even know where we're running to or what we're running from, and we just wake up one day and we're just a mess. God loves to be the shepherd of messy sheep. It doesn't matter how far you've run or what you've run from, the amount of mud that is on, uh, that's accumulated in your wool. God loves to find sheep who need extra care a special touch, who are at their wit's end and don't know what else to do. The good shepherd is willing to lay down his life to give spiritual freedom 
spiritual refreshment, even to the most filthy, the most undeserving of sheep. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is found in Luke chapter 39. It's at the end of Jesus' life. Jesus was God's son who was sent to this world, and Jesus lived a perfect, sinless life, all the time being prepared to be the sacrifice for the sins of the world. And here at the end of his life, he's, he's on a cross. He's being crucified, as the Romans used to do, uh, for the, for really for the sins of the world, for the evil that's found in the world. And there are two criminals that have been sentenced, and they're hanging on crosses beside Jesus. One of the criminals who's hanging railed at him, the Bible says, are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him and said, do you not fear God since you're under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we are receiving the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And he said, and he said Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Here's a man who could not atone for anything wrong he had done. His sentence was final. His body was nailed to a cross next to Jesus, and he asks Jesus to remember him. And Jesus' words are this, Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Our soul refreshment, our salvation is not based on what we do. It's based on the goodness and the person of God who showed up in our lives in the person of Jesus. Soul refreshment is found in a relationship with God. And the good news is it's offered freely to all of us. We do not have to earn it. We simply have to ask for it and receive it. Refreshment comes, first and foremost, through God's involvement in our lives. A relationship with God through Jesus, our good shepherd. Do you need some spiritual refreshment today? A, a little kickstart to your spiritual life? Start by getting to know the good shepherd. Go back to the simple, basic things of our faith. Get to know a God who loves you. I have a small action point here for you, you might think about. In, in my life, one of the greatest ways, well, I went to seminary and I knew a lot about God. <clears throat> But I realized I was having trouble praying. I had somebody that was very wise simply said, open the Bible to the middle, to the Psalms, and start praying the Psalms. If you need refreshment, if you, know, you don't know how to start, allow the Psalms to give you language to communicate with God. They've been the church's prayer book for centuries. Allow those words to create something in your heart. Maybe just read the Psalms. Sometimes I will, I hate to say this, I will sing them when no one, when Kelly's asleep and no one is around so no one can hear me. You don't have to sing good. But that they were made for that. Allow the Psalms to give you language to speak with God. The Psalm then next moves to David recognizing the provision of God. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Right there, David has found the secret. If he lives in a constant trust of his shepherd, all his needs will be taken care of. Because David has no problem taking on the role of a sheep. He's constantly taken care of by God. He writes, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Now, sheep won't lie down uh, unless four basic requirements are met. They've got to be free from fear free from friction with others, free from flies or parasites. You like the Fs? I'm going with this. Free from having to find food. Unless their basic needs are met, sheep have this anxiousness about them and they won't lie down. Sheep need to know they're taken care of before they rest. And it seems to me that this is what David is pointing us back to. Maybe in these the spiritual journal of David, he's pointing himself back to this. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Does this sound familiar a little bit? What keeps you up at night? Those things that make your mind just race and race that you can't figure out. What gets your mind going to where it makes you kind of exhausted? Well, that's not where refreshment comes from. Refreshment comes from taking those things and placing them before God and saying, I can't figure this out and I need your help. And the great news is God's willing to help. God has promised to provide every need that we, that we have. And David is reminding himself of all is God, that God is able to do in his life. It's almost as if David's reconvincing himself that God is there. And he places his trust 
in, back in God. It's interesting that David uses this image of lying down in green pastures. I've never been to the Holy Land where the, the books of the Bible were written, but from every picture and everything I know about geography, it's not a lush place. There's a lot of barrenness, dryness, brown, kind of like West Texas if you've ever been out there. But yet, even in the harshest of climates, David is noticing and recognizing God can provide an oasis. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. David notes that he's, God is very concerned with the state of his soul. And I would say that to you today, that God is very concerned with the state of, of your soul. And in some, in some cases, everything in life can be going great. Everything on the outside looks like it's the all-American person. But inside, our soul is dry and, and, and cracked. And God wants to take our soul to a place of health and of rest. Dallas Willard has a really interesting take on the soul. I'll read this quote to you. I found it very helpful. It said, the soul is that aspect of your whole being that correlates, integrates, and enlivens everything going on in the various dimensions of the self. If you're a com computer person, it's kind of like the, the CPU. God, our soul is like the central processing unit of our lives. Everything seems to go in there and out from there. Every thought, every decision, every feeling goes through our soul. David wisely notices that God, his shepherd, is very concerned about the state of his soul. It's an important part, maybe the most important part of our spiritual lives. Escape won't help your soul. Margin won't help your soul. A new relationship won't help your soul. A new job won't. Success won't. A vacation won't help your soul. Nothing can heal and refresh the human soul apart from God. This is God's domain. This is God's place of, of expertise. God is in the soul refreshing and restoring business. God and God alone. David goes on to say, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his Name sake. Where we are is not where we're going. See, God has this plan for each of us to take us as broken vessels through a process of healing and refreshment, not to perfection, but into a place that then all of a sudden we're sharing that with other people. I get these phone calls. My wife, much more outgoing, much more friendly than I am. She's one of those people that can go into a store and have these divine appointments. And I get these texts often that go like this. Chris, I had a divine appointment. It's going to cost you. <laughs> okay. God wants to take us from a place of, of needing to be refreshed to sending refreshment out to other people. That's where he's going. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads me in the right paths for his name's sake. Four times David uses that word he. He's highlighting how God has provided for the needs of his life. He's reminding himself how good God has been in his life. This idea of paths of righteousness may seem odd right here in the landscape of this psalm, but God is very interested not just in where we are, but in getting us going to some other place, some healthy, some whole, some functioning place where we can serve and love others. And in order to, to experience the soul refreshment, we, we, we turn our focus into restoring our relationship with God. Listen to these words. Eugene Peterson translated Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 this way. Are you tired? Are you worn out, burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Don't you love that phrase? I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. So here's the action point if you need a refresher for your soul. Take every concern you have to God. Because God is concerned about everything going on in your life. Open up that pain, open up that frustration, open up that need to God, and God's presence and provision will be there exactly the way you need it. David then reminds us in this psalm of God's presence in our lives. 
Verse 4, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Did you notice David turned from he, talking about God, to you. You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. He's talking now directly to God. He's convinced himself of God's personal relationship with him, convinced himself and reminded himself that God is there, and now he begins to deal directly with God. In the most difficult times of his life, David reached out to God, and God took his hand personally and walked him through. And those times, if you read your Bible in the Old Testament, when David couldn't, it seems as if God just picked him up and carried him. But but that's what a loving shepherd does. I can remember at Baylor University, a professor, his name was Bob Denton. He ran a human performance lab, and me and some guys were in a club, and we would do these bike races. So he would put us through all types of, I say torture, he said interval training. I don't know. But we learned to respect Bob Denton very much, and he was leading a Bible study for us one night. And he just simply said, this, I can remember, this is 30 years ago. He said, man, when I was a soldier in Vietnam, the words of Psalm 23 were the only thing I could remember as I walked through the jungles. Even though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. God's refreshment and strength is available to us even in the most difficult of times. When all hell is breaking through in our life, cling to God, your good shepherd. He's not a concept to be known. He is a person to love who wants to provide care for you in the most practical of ways. And if you read this psalm in the context, the valley of the shadow is just as much a part of God's plan for our lives as the green pastures as the still waters. And God's goodness can be just as evident in the valley of the shadow of death as it can be in those good, good green pastures. Are you in the midst of a valley? I have good news for you that God is there. Are, are you walking in the shadow? God is, God is there. Have you given up on God? It's okay. God is there. Are you in a place where you think God can never find you? There is no such place here on earth. In 2018, it was a normal hot summer day in Thailand. Twelve boys decided that they were going to go on an adventure. They had been wanting to explore the Tham Luang cave system. They thought the adventure would be fun and they would have stories to tell their families. A, A sudden storm changed their lives forever. The water filled up the cave's entrance and they were too deep into the passageways in order to be uh, able to come out or to swim out. The boys were trapped. They had no food, no light, no way to communicate with the outside world. The cave was too deep. It was too dark, too long for an attempted escape. As word got out to the, to the world, people all over the globe began to pray. God, God heard the prayers and something ensued. It was like a multinational rescue operation. Over 10,000 people, it was uh, estimated, from different areas of life were involved in rescuing these boys, people in logistics, communications, planners, project planners, technology, equipment operators, soldiers, rescue workers, and even divers and pilots. The world came together on behalf of these 12 boys. It took nine days, but the divers finally made their way to the boys who were huddled up on a, on a muddy ledge deep in the, deep in the, the cave system. The first diver pulled off his mask and said, I'm just the first, others are coming. You may feel right now that you're in a place where where no one, nothing can rescue or help you. Please hear me, and and you don't need to wait to be rescued because God is there first, and God will always be there, and God will never leave you or forsake you. Your Lord, your good shepherd sees you, knows you by name, and is with you. The Lord is your shepherd. You don't need to want for a thing. Just open your heart. Open your life. Let God into your need, and he will be the source of both rescue and refreshment. It's on the way. God's presence is the promise that help is near, and we are never forgotten. Place your trust in God. 
It sounds almost trite, doesn't it? The simplest of things in our Christian faith, but it is where we find God. When we take the place where we cannot make it anymore and we place our trust and our relying on God. God's presence, God's provision, God's power. It's not a concept, but it's a reality. And God is revealing himself as a caring, involved, powerful shepherd in our lives. And the question is, will you allow God to enter into your life and refresh? I'm going to ask you to bow your heads as we move to a time of, of what we might call commitment. Some of you have heard this message, and man, you're tracking right with it, and you're saying, I just need to open up my heart and, and allow God to find me. You've been running, you've been trying to do things on your own, simply do that. Where you are, you simply pray, Lord, I open up my life, I've been trying to figure this out on my own, I can't, help me. Maybe you've been looking at God from a distance as the great concept, and you need to welcome in it, him in as your good shepherd. You need to recognize your need. You've been a Christian, a follower of Jesus for a long time. But that refreshment is what you need. Ask for it, and God will bring it. It may be that I've been talking, and you're, you're thinking, I've never asked Jesus, this good shepherd, to be my personal savior, to be the sacrifice for my sins. Again, I'm going to ask everybody, just out of respect for each other, just to bow your heads and close your eyes. But if you would like to ask Jesus to be your personal Savior right now, would you simply lift up your hand so I might see that and we'll lead, I'll lead you in a prayer? I see you. If you would, let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I need you as my personal Savior. I ask you to enter my life and forgive me of my sins. I welcome you and receive you as this good shepherd and the God of my life. And I ask for your goodness, your mercy to come into my life and save me. If you would like to make a decision of any kind, or our prayer teams will be here at the front. I'll be at the front and maybe some other staff members. If there's anything that we can do uh, for you or pray with you about, if you'd like to join the church, you're welcome to. If not, I'll be outside of, on the round table right side of these doors. We can visit there as well. But would you please stand and sing as we enter this time of commitment?